Kidney disease progressed very differently, and the main problem with it is that it's a silent disease till the very end, and therefore it goes unnoticed. Many patients with the same initial diagnosis progress at various rates, and we don't know why. In 1981, I was diagnosed with chronic kidney disease. I've been on both kinds of dialysis and had four transplants, and proud to say didn't miss any work over that 37-year period. My strategy all along to survive was to rely on advanced sciences and technologies to catch up to cure me, and it worked out. At IU, we conduct collaborative research. Together, I think we are working to really understand why patients get chronic kidney disease and what we can do about it. The NIH now has a, a major project going on called the Kidney Precision Medicine. And the, the, the heart of the project is uh, being able to study and get the most information out of these precious human kidney biopsies. Hi, good to see you again. The University Precision Health Program aims to bring transformative patient-centered therapies and preventions into clinical use here in Indiana. There are multiple pillars. These include genomic medicine and drug discovery. At IU, we have a biobank of biopsies accumulated over the year. The current initiative is to take these biopsies and apply cutting-edge techniques to get more answers out of them. We have pioneered two approaches here. One is to study the genetic molecular composition, more specifically the mRNA, it's called RNA-seq, of specific individual tubular segments of the nephron. In parallel, on the same piece of tissue, that little biopsy, we have pioneered large-scale quantitative imaging in which we obtain very detailed images using advanced microscopy, mostly through our O'Brien Center. IU is home to one of seven NIH-funded O'Brien Centers. These O'Brien Centers function to provide the nation and, and international investigators with resources that aren't readily available at other institutions. And we've established a core group of investigators that push the envelope tremendously because of those interactions. All these uh, technologies that we're using, our goal is really to understand uh, at the tissue level uh, from biopsies from patients how the disease is forming and how these relationship in, in this small microenvironment at the molecular and cellular level uh, will give us an idea of how uh, diseases uh, happen and gives us, enable us to have tools in the future to fight the disease. We are in amazing times in nephrology uh, in the sense that we have so much to do in terms of uh, randomized trials in nephrology. Unlike many other specialties which have done a lot of trials, we are just beginning to understand the value of these trials and uh, if we start to do randomized trials in patients who have kidney disease, including those on dialysis, we can, we can really integrate or change practice of how we uh, treat our patients who have kidney disease. I am actually doing a clinical trial right now, uh, which is uh, going to look at the mechanisms of uh, high blood pressure in patients uh, who are treated with erythropoietin. And in doing that, uh, we are uh, developing a technique uh, by which we can measure endothelial function. In addition, we measure blood pressure in a very accurate way, which is called ambulatory blood pressure monitoring. When you incorporate both techniques, endothelial health and blood pressure, uh, you get the magic and you can figure out why uh, people are getting hypertensive. I'm also a principal investigator of an NIH-funded P30 grant. One of the cores under that is called the FIT core. And this, in this core, we are evaluating up to 5,000 people and looking at standardized measures of physical performance, gait speed, hand grip, as well as their lean body mass and their bone density, and then using high-resolution peripheral quantitative CT scan to get at bone compartments. So we can compare patients with CKD to other chronic diseases and try to understand what is unique about CKD in terms of their musculoskeletal impairment versus other disease states. We can learn a lot by doing comparison studies. The collaborations at Indiana University School of Medicine are crafted to break down silos. They involve pathologists, 
geneticists, preclinical scientists using animal models, experts in imaging, translational scientists, as well as experts in clinical trials. I think this breadth of talent is relatively unique and has the capability of making us a worldwide leader in nephrology.